Thanks so much for joining me in this episode of Mama Soup Presents The Three Phases of Pushing Your Baby Out. Yes, there are three phases. Did you know that? Many women don't know. Um, but that's why I thought it would be really important to bring this information to you so that you can learn about how to maximize each stage or phase of pushing and minimize your risks of tearing. But first, let me tell you a little bit about me. Hey there, I'm Joanne and thanks again for joining me. I'm a former labor and delivery postpartum nurse, a doula, Lamaz educator. I blog for the Mama Soup blog. And I'm the creator of the Mama Soup app just for moms. By the way, you can check that app out on iOS and Android. It's a free download. But I think my most important role is the role of mom to four kids. In today's quick tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you about the three phases of pushing. There's the resting phase, the active phase, and the crowning phase. And I'm gonna be telling you about things that you can do to work with your body during each phase to minimize your chances of tearing or needing an episiotomy um, and stitches. So let's get started. The first phase of pushing is called the resting phase. This happens when the baby's head passes through your cervix and then there's some slack in the uterus that needs to be taken up. So what your uterus has to do is kind of catch up and you may have 20 to 30 minutes of contractions that you don't even really feel. And this is when you can get a good big rest. Once you get through the resting phase, you go straight into the active phase of pushing. You'll really feel your contractions now. You'll feel the urge to push. This is the time when you really need to listen to your body and let it tell you what it needs to do. Don't ever hold your breath or bear down unless your body is telling you to do it. If you have an epidural, you may not feel this urge as strongly. Now that you've done all the hard work of pushing your baby down, that head is going to crown and that creates the ring of fire. It really does burn, burn, burn. It's really intense. Your body will naturally back off on the pushing so that you don't tear. And when you listen, to your body at this stage, you won't push too hard and this reduces your chance of tearing. What you see in the movies and on TV, um, a woman giving birth and there's somebody standing beside her screaming down a countdown from 10, telling her when to push. This is the wrong thing to do because if you're listening to somebody else tell you how to push, you're not listening to your own body. Your body is going to tell you when you need to push, grunt, groan, or breathe, and this will decrease your chances of tearing. One of the biggest fears of women before they actually go into labor is that they're going to poop while they push. And the truth is there's a good chance that you will. But nurses and doctors and midwives and anybody who works in the childbirth industry are experts at cleaning it up very quickly. You won't even notice because there's so much going on down there. There you have it, the three phases of pushing and how you can work with each phase to reduce your chances of tearing or needing stitches. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, I hope you'll come over to the Mama Soup blog at blog.mamasoup.ca to learn more about pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and motherhood. We would love to see you over there.